video. In this video, we will focus on finite difference tables in lesson 1, while in lesson 2, the focus will be on description of best number patterns and more advanced number patterns will be discussed in lesson 3. In lesson 1, the focus is on finite difference tables. The outcomes for this lesson. In this lesson, we will consider common number patterns linked to the four basic operations, mention some special number patterns, discuss the implications of constant first, second and third differences, and finally discuss methods of finding the generating rule if first differences are constant. Let us consider common number patterns linked to the four basic operations. Here we want to see if you can spot any patterns in the following lists of numbers. In the first example, you should be able to identify the constant addition of 3. So in other words, to move from a particular term to the next term, we constantly add 3. If we add 3 to 7, we end up at the next term, 10. And if we add 3 again to that, we end up with 13 and so on. So here we have constant addition of 3. In the second example, here clearly we constantly subtract 2 from a term to obtain the next term. So we take 17, subtract 2 from that to get 15, and again if we subtract 2 from, from 15, we end up with 13, and this pattern will be continued. So at this stage, we can actually extend this list of numbers. In, in the third example, yeah, the obvious action that is taking place is that we constantly multiply by 2. 6 multiply by 2 gives us the next one, 12. And again, if we multiply the 12 by 2, we obtain the next number in this particular list, namely 24. And in the last example, here we have constant division by, by 3, because 27 divided by 3 will give you 9. And in turn, if we divide 9 by 3, we end up with 3. Of course, instead of saying constant division by 3, we could say this is constant multiplication by a third. In a, in a similar way, in example number 2, instead of saying constant subtraction of 2, we could have rephrased that as constant addition of minus 2. Let us look at some special number patterns or sequences. Here we have what is commonly known as the triangular numbers. Obviously, if you look at the numbers, only you can't see why it is called the triangular numbers. But if we uh, re-illustrate this in terms of a particular sketch, it becomes obvious why it is called a triangular number. So there is the number 1, which is represented by one dot. Then you can see to that 1, we add 2 to get the next triangular number. So you can see that is the original one. And this two dots here is in the second row is the addition uh, of 2. So that clearly uh, gives us a triangle.
To go from the 3 to the 6, we add 3. So obviously you can see here, I first add 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6. So you could easily extend this. But the important thing is that uh, in this pattern here, that constant or, or that addition by a specific no of a specific number is clearly illustrated. To move, for instance, from three to six, now can you see the top two rows illustrate the three, but then from three to six we add another three, and this is the three dots. To move from six to ten, we need to take the number six, which is the first three rows here, and then add four which is the bottom row. So you should be able to extend this particular sketch of the triangular uh, numbers. I just want to point out that you could view it in, in, in various directions. You can see you could start here, this is one, and that's another two, so that's three. And there we add three, and there we add four. Or you could view it uh, from the bottom right corner, one, two, three, and and four. So play around with that a little bit. Uh, the next uh, number pattern that I want to introduce is commonly known as the square numbers. Now you could actually see why we call this the square numbers, because one is one square, four is two square, uh, 9 is 3 square, 16 4 square, and so on. But even if we make a sketch of it, we, we find that we see a pattern which forms a square. So this is 1. Here we have a square where we have two dots on each side. Right? So that gives me 4. Here we have uh, a square again. And in this case, Vertically and horizontally, you have three dots, so that gives me nine. And here we have again a square, but now we have horizontal and vertical rows, each containing uh, four dots. Again, I leave it for you to extend this particular number pattern. Next, we consider a conjecture based on constant first differences. Consider the two examples here. In example 1, we, we have the sequence of numbers uh, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19, 22, and so on. If we investigate it further, first question is, how do I find first differences? Now, you obtain the first differences by taking a term and subtracting from that the preceding term. So, 10 minus 7 gives me 3. 13 minus 10 gives me 3. 16 minus 13, 3. And so on. We can even use this to predict the next one. That will be 22 plus 3. In other words, 25. So the first time we find the differences between two, a term and its preceding term, we find that differences will be constant. So that's why we say first differences are constant. The similar, a similar observation can be made in the second example, because here 15 minus 17 gives me minus 2 and not plus 2. 13 minus 15 gives me minus 2. So here again we find that the first differences are constant because it's always equal to minus 2. We make the following conjecture that if first differences are constant, then such sequences must be linear of nature. And the generating rule is a defining equation uh, that is linear. Now remember, linear also means to the first degree. And this is an equation of the first degree because we have n to the power 1. You see, n, which term you are working with, t1 is the first term, t2 the second term, so n is the variable, while a and b will be, be constant. Just as a check, for example, number 1, 
don't worry too much about how I actually get this particular uh, generating rule. We will look at it later on. In, in the first example, the generating rule for a particular term, Tn, is 3n plus 4. You can check it. If n is 1, you get 3 times 1, which is 3 plus 4, which is 7. And if n, for instance, is 3, T3 is 3 times 3 is 9 plus 4. And the third one in this particular sequence is 13. So, so in other words, if I want to find T10, what will be the tenth number in this particular sequence, then T10 will be 3 times 10 plus 4, or 34. The important thing is that this particular expression, 3n plus 1 is an expression of the first degree. So it is linear of nature. It's a linear expression. The whole thing is a linear e equation. Here is the generating rule for the, for the second one. So Tn in this case is minus 2 times n plus, plus 19. Again, you can check the correctness of this particular rule by substituting in certain values. Like, for instance, if we want to find T2, T2 is minus 2 times 2, which is minus 4, plus 19, and that is clearly 15. In a similar way, you can calculate some more. But again, the important thing is that this is an equation of the first degree, or a linear equation, and this particular expression here on the right hand side is an expression of the first degree or a linear expression. So at this stage, this is what we can uh, conjecture that if first differences in a sequence are constant, then the generating rule must be linear of nature. We now look at a conjecture based on constant second differences. In example number three, if we look at the sequence 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, I hope you can recognize or will recognize this as the squares of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and, and 7. And then, as before, first find the first differences. 9 minus 4 is 5, 16 minus 9 is 7, 25 minus uh, 16, 9, 36 minus 25, 11, and finally 49 minus 36, 13. Then clearly, the first differences are not constant. So now we go and, and repeat this process. And in this way we obtain what we call the second differences. 7 minus 5 gives us 2. And in the same way, 9 minus 7, 11 minus 9, and 13 minus 11 also gives us answers of 2. So now, although the first differences are not constant, we find that the second differences are constant. So we make the following conjecture. If the second differences are constant, then the sequence must be quadratic of nature, with a generating rule, an equation in the second degree. I hope you can see that this is a quadratic equation, or an equation in the second degree, because the highest power for n is 2. More specifically, if we check for this particular example, note 4 is actually 2 square. So we say that the general rule is n plus 1 square, or if you expand this, you get n square plus 2n plus 1. Note, the generating rule is definitely an equation of the second degree, or this expression here on the right hand side is an expression of the second degree or a quadratic uh, expression. Don't worry too much about finding this, have the, developed the ability to find this particular expression. It will be discussed in great, 
uh, 11. We can just test this uh, by taking some specific examples uh, from this particular sequence, like uh, the, the second term in, in this particular sequence must be 9. So uh, T2 is then 2 square, which is 4, plus 2 times 2, which is 4 plus 4, plus 1, and that gives us 9. So in this way, you can uh, uh, check the correctness of it, or you could utilize this particular generating rule to, to extend it. Like, for instance, if you want to find the next one in the sequence, which we, of course, we know must be 64, but it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The seventh one in the sequence must be 64, so you can either say T7 is 7 plus 1, which is 8 squared, it's 64, or uh, replacing N uh, by, by 7, so you get 7 squared, which is 49 plus... 14 plus 1 and 49 plus 1 is 50 plus the 14 gives me uh, 64. Finally, we look at the conjecture based on constant third differences. Now, if you look at this particular example, uh, clearly 8 is 2 to the power 3, 27, 3 to the power 3, 64, 4 to the power 3, 125, 5 to the power 3, while 216 and 343 are uh, 6 cube and 7 cube, respectively. Again, if we investigate the first differences, 27 uh, minus 8, 19, 64 minus 20, 37, and so on, we find that the first differences are not constant. Therefore, we check the second differences. 37 minus 19, 18, 61 minus 37, 24. And again, we find, if we continue with this, that even the second differences are not constant. But if we find the differences between two consecutive terms in the second differences, we obtain what we call the third differences. So in other words, we repeat this process for the third time. So 24 minus 18, as well as 30 minus 24 and 30, 6 minus 30 are all equal to 6. So therefore, we find that the third differences are constant. That's expected because, remember, uh, the nature of this is, is the cubes. Right? It's the cube of 8 is the cube of 2, that's the cube of 3, and, and that is the cube of of 4 or 4 to the power 3. So we make the conjecture then that if the third differences are constant then the sequence must be cubic of nature and a generating rule must be an equation of the third degree. Or can you see here the, the expression on the right hand side is an expression of the third degree. Check it specifically for this example. 8 is uh, 1 plus 1 or 2 cubed so one way of generalizing this is to say that Tn is n plus uh, 1 cube. And, and then if you expand this, uh, we get, and I leave this for you as an exercise, we get n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n plus 1. And this is clearly an expression of the, of the third uh, degree. We can even test some of the the numbers here, like for instance the second one uh, should be, second term should be 27, so T2 is 2 plus 1, which is 3 cubed, and that's 27. Or, or you can replace N here by 2, uh, and that will give us uh, 2 cubed, which is 8, 3 times 4 is 12 plus 8, uh, that's 20, and another 3 times 2, it's 6 plus 1, uh, is another 7, so that will also give us uh, 27. We ask the question, why such sequences can be classified as linear, quadratic, or cubic? We will investigate these questions graphically. 
We now look at a graphical view linked to constant uh, differences. So consider again this particular example where we discovered that uh, the first differences were constantly equal to 3. But let's assume that the inputs is indicated by x and the outputs by y. So can you see there is a constant change in the x values of 1, so delta x is 1, and at the same time if there is a constant change in in the values of x, there is also a constant change in the values of y, in this case delta y is equal to 3. We made the conjecture before that this sequence must be linear of nature, uh, and it must give us a generating rule. Uh, which is an equation of the first degree, or this in general is a linear equation. Well, graphically, if we plot the input values against the output values, as I've done that, then it seems that these discrete points will lie on a particular straight line. And this straight line will have a defining equation of y equals 3x plus 4. You, you notice that I've indicated the straight line by a dotted line, simply because in this particular example, we do not have values in between. All right, so we're only really working with the discrete uh, points. So we can therefore say that whenever delta x uh, increases by 1, right? there's a constant change in x, namely delta x of 1, then at the same time delta y is also constantly equal to 3. So we, we can then make the following statement, if whenever delta x is constant it implies that delta y is constant, in other words first difference is constant, then the sequence is linear of nature, and if we plot these particular discrete points, then we find a straight line, or, or there is a tendency that these points will lie on a particular straight line. Next we look at a graphical view linked to constant second differences. Again, if we consider the input values of x here and y the output values, then it should be clear that to obtain y, we simply need to square the x values. And if you investigate, you'll find that the first differences are not constant, but the second differences are constantly equal to 2. So therefore, we can make the conjecture because uh, the second differences are constant, this sequence must be quadratic equation and a generating rule must be an equation of the second degree or an quadratic equation. As we can clearly see there, the generating rule is then y is equal to 2 to x squared. Now, if we plot these discrete points again, then there is clearly the tendency that this seems to be a parabola. Now in this case this parabola will have a defining equation of y equals to, to x squared. So in other words the discrete points perfectly fits the, the, the parabola defined by y equals x squared. Next we look at a graphical view linked to constant third differences. Okay, and if we revisit this example, but now indicate x as the input values, and we can see I've extended it to the left, uh, and then simply calculate the cube of all the input values to get the output values. Then investigating further, we find that first differences nor second differences are constant, but third differences are actually constant. It is pretty obvious 
that the generating rule here is we find the y values by taking the cube of the x value. So to obtain an, in, an output value, you simply need to find the cube of an input value. So we can we have made this conjecture before that if third differences are constant, then the sequence must be cubic of nature. And in this case, we can find the generating rule. Again, if we should plot these discrete points, then we get uh, a graph of this nature. And in grade 12, you will learn that uh, this graph will have a defining equation of y equals x cubed. So again, we find that the discrete points will all lie on on the function defined by y equals uh, x to the to the power 3. So the graphical view, uh, although you don't have knowledge about the cubic uh, function at this stage, the graphical view gives us an indication of the nature of this particular uh, output values. We will focus now on finding the general rule if the first differences are constant. Remember, if you want to find a generating rule when second and third differences are constant, this will only be discussed in grade 11. So the first method that we will look at is uh, use simple inspection. So we, we're going to discuss three possible methods. The first one is by means of inspection. Then by solving two linear equations simultaneously. And finally using the stats mode of the FX82ES plus calculator. Let us consider uh, in our discussion this particular example. Now you can see delta x uh, is equal to 1. So there is a constant change in x, and at the same time, there is a constant change in y, because delta y is equal to 3. So here we have constant first differences, therefore we've made the conjecture before that the equation must be linear of nature, or it must be uh, a defining equation of the first degree. So, what does it mean by inspection? Now, from this observation here, that first differences are, are constant, we can say that the generating rule is of the form y equals ax plus b. Now, our task really is to find the values of a and, and b. Now, the value of a is linked to first differences. We see the first differences is equal to 3, so this implies that a is equal to 3. So therefore, the, at this stage, the defining equation is given by y equals 3x plus b. So we only need to find out what is the value of b. And this is where the inspection comes in. So what I'm really doing here is some kind of an inspection. Namely, that if we replace x by 1 in this last equation, uh, then of course y must be equal to, to 7. So if you if you replace x by 1, you get y is equal to 3 times 1 is 3. And you may ask the question, what must I add to 3 to get 7? And that is 4. All right. Well, here is a more formal way of finding it. If x is 1, y must be 7. So if I replace y by 7 and x uh, by 1 in this equation, and solving then for b, we find that b is 4. You see, the inspection really means that I can find the value of b by inspection. So if, if for instance, I take uh, x as 2, uh, if, if x is 2, 3 times 2 is, is 6, but you want 10. So therefore, you need to add an additional 4, which mean makes b equals to 4. You can also test the correctness of this generating rule, namely that y is equal to 3x plus 4 by using or utilizing any, any other ordered pair. For instance, if x is 3, y must be, be 13. So if, if x is equal to 3, 
then we get uh, 3 times 3 is 9 plus 4. Right, 3 times 3 plus 4, that's 13. So that in, will imply that the, the ordered pair 313 also satisfied this defining equation. You see, this will mean that that a discrete point with coordinates 313 will lie on the straight line defined by y equals uh, 3x plus 4. In the second method, we simply solve two linear equations simultaneously to find a general writing rule if first differences are constant. So we had this example and remember uh, from this little investigation because first differences are constant we can conclude that the generating rule must be uh, linear of nature. Now in this generating rule, there is two unknowns, A and B. So we need to find the values of A and B. Now in mathematics, there is a general principle. If there is two unknowns, you need to set up two equations and then solve them simultaneously. So in this case, you can utilize any two ordered pairs. I've utilized the ordered pair 210 and 313. So if I replace uh, y by 10 and x by 2 in, in this generating rule, I get 10 is equal to 2a plus b. That's my first linear equation. And in the same way, replacing x by 3 and y by 13, we end up with a second uh, linear equation. So now we need to solve this these two uh, equations simultaneously and you should be familiar with this process. If I subtract equation 1 from from equation uh, 2 then of course the b's will cancel out and 3a minus 2a is a and, and uh, uh, 13 minus 10 is 3 so I get that a is 3. So it's a different way of finding a. And then all we do is we back substitute the value of a equals to 3 either into equation 1 or in equation uh, 2. So uh, here I've back substituted into equation 1. So I, I replace a by 3. So we get 10 is equal to 2 times 3 plus b. So that means that b is 10 minus 6 or 4. Or if you, you don't have to do both, uh, if you utilize the second ordered pair, namely the ordered pair um, uh, 313, then replacing uh, x by, by, sorry, y by 13 and x by 3, right, in, uh, in, in that equation, then we get that b. Uh, is equal to 4. So therefore in both cases we find that the generating rule right, uh, is equal to, to 3x. y equals to 3x plus plus 4. The third method of finding the generating rule if first differences are constant is to make use of your Casio FX82ES plus uh, calculator. So we will use exactly uh, the same example and, and here is a description of the method. Uh, we would firstly uh, switch to statistical mode and then select the linear option. Now remember we know it's linear of nature because the first differences are constant. So we are actually informed uh, by, by first differences to make this selection. And then we enter uh, at least two sets of input-output values. Now why will two be sufficient? Because we only really have two unknowns, a, capital A and capital B. But there's nothing wrong in entering all these input-output values. And then all you do is you utilize your calculator to recall the values for B and A and, and hopefully we will find it's 3 and 4 and therefore the generating rule can then be identified. So I'm now going to use the calculator to, to show that the generating rule is given by this. Alright, now that we have our calculator, so the first thing is to switch to stats mode. So you simply go to mode there 
and you select select statistical mode. Now, now here we have all the options and remember because first differences are constant we know we need to select the linear option. Right, so remember there's not enough space on the screen here so this really mean option 2 that the defining equation is y equals uh, a plus bx or the way I've written it here y is uh, bx plus a. So I select option 2 and the minute you do that you you get this particular table. So now I enter a few values. Like I said it's it's more than enough to enter two. So let me let just enter say at least three of them. I'm going to select the even ones. Let's select x equals to two, uh, x equals four and uh, x equals six. You can enter as many as you like or at least at only two will be sufficient. I leave that for you to investigate further. And then I enter the corresponding y values because at the moment it's set at a default of, of zero. So if x is two, clearly y must be 10. So enter that. If it's four, it's 16. And finally, if it's 6, it's 22. Right. So three values is more than enough. Clear this. Remember, it's not gone. It's still in the internal memory. So now, if you look at this key here, the second function to the one uh, key, that is the stats, stats variable. So I'll go to uh, second function and select that. And then we go to option 5, which is the regression option. And there you see the corresponding uh, stats values for A and B. Don't worry about the rest. We will investigate them later on. So I can, for instance, start off by recalling. Let's recall A first. So it's option 1. Enter. Right. So clearly A is equal to 4 clear this. I do this simply to get a zero on display. Um, so I repeat the process. Stats variable. Go to regression and now select option two which is the B. Enter this. If you didn't clear that uh, previous screen you would have had four on display. So it's advisable to, to clear that. And now uh, enter and we find that b is equal to 3. So this is this is really a simple way right, of uh, proving or finding the defining equation. You are now ready to tackle tutorial 1 in which you need to determine the generating rule of a number sequence in which we have uh, a constant first differences. So below you are given a sequence and it's already indicated for you here that the, the first differences between two consecutive uh, output values is constantly equal to minus two. So you firstly need to determine the generating rule by means of inspection. Then secondly you need to set up and solve two linear equations simultaneously to define this, to, to, to determine this generating rule. Thirdly, you need to use your calculator in stats mode to determine the generating rule. And, and finally, use a sequence or sequence values to test the correctness of your generating rule. I suggest that you pause the video, do tutorial one, and then come back and view possible solutions. Let us consider a suggested solution to problem 1 of tutorial 1. So you need to determine the generating rule by means of, of inspection. Now, because first differences are constant, the generating rule will be of uh, linear nature. So it will be of the form y equals ax plus plus b. 
Now, as part of the inspection, because delta x is 1, the first differences uh, will always be an indication of the value uh, of, of a. And the first difference uh, in this particular case is minus 2. Therefore, the value of a is minus 2. So at this stage, my defining equation is y equals to minus 2x plus b. And then continuing with this inspection, if I replace x by 1, I know that my output value must be 17. So if I replace x, x by 1, I get y is minus 2 uh, plus b. So in order to get 17, what must you add to minus 2 to get 17? And that's clearly 19. Or you could uh, follow this particular procedure by substituting x equals to 1 and y equals to 17 in, uh, in this previous equation. Then you get 17 is equal to minus 2 times 1 plus b. Solving for b, you find that b is 19. Therefore, the generating rule is given by y equals minus 2x plus 19. Remember, you can always test the correctness. For instance, if if y if x is equal to 4, y must be 11. So if we test it, uh, if x is 4, that's minus 2 times uh, 4, it's minus 8. Minus 8 plus 19 will give you an output value of, of 11 or a y value of 11. In, in problem 2, we need to find the defining equation or generating rule by solving uh, two equations or set up two linear equations and solve them simultaneously. So we focus on exactly uh, the same example. So we know because first differences are constant that the generating rule must be of this nature. So we only need to find the values of a and and b. So we need to set up two equations. So I've utilized the second order pair to 15. So in other words, if y is 15, then x must be 2. So we obtain our first equation. And I've also utilized the third order pair 313. That means if, if y is 13, then x must be 3. So we end up with this second equation. So now we solve these two equations simultaneously. And the easiest is to subtract equation 1 from equation 2, because then the b's will, will cancel out. So I get uh, 13 minus 15, that's minus 2, and 3a minus 2a, it's a. So a is minus 2. So here we find exactly the same value for a. And all you do then is you back substitute the value for a, namely minus 2, in either equation 1 or 2. I'm only going to do it in, in one particular case. That's sufficient. So replacing uh, x by minus 2 in equation, not x, sorry, replacing a by minus 2 in the first equation, you get then that 15 is equal to 2 multiplied by minus 2 plus b. So b is therefore 15. This, of course, is minus 4. It becomes plus 4. So b is 19. And therefore, we obtain the same generating rule as before, because it's the same example. In problem 3 of tutorial 1, we need to utilize our calculator in stats mode to determine the generating rule. And again, we have exactly the same example. So let's just look at the procedure. Firstly, you need to switch to the statistical mode and then select the linear option uh, because first differences are constant. We know that the defining or the generating rule must be linear of nature. Then we enter at least two. In this case, I'm just going to enter two values because that's sufficient because we only have two unknowns, A and, and B. So it's really any two ordered pairs. And then you simply recall the stats variable values for B and A. And, and hopefully we will find that A is 19 and B minus 2. Therefore, 
that the generating rule uh, is exactly the same as before. All right, so let's carry out this procedure. So firstly, we switch to statistical mode. So you go to mode and you select your statistical mode. And obviously, because it's linear, we select option two. I'm really going to enter just two values. Let's enter the value where, where x is two and the value where x is five. Any two. All right, going back to the top of that list and then across, and then enter the corresponding output values. If it's two, the y value is clearly 15. And uh, if it's five, the y value is equal to nine. That's sufficient. And all I do now is to is to recall these values. Remember, I go to regression. Let's recall A first, and we expect this to be 19. All right, calculate. It takes a little while because it needs to calculate it. And then uh, clear this. I've discussed that before. And repeat this process. Go to regression. But now we want to recall the value for B and show that it's minus 2 as expected. In the last problem of tutorial 1, we must use any sequence value to test the correctness of the generating rule. Remember, we've established in three different, using three different methods that we expect the generating rule to be y equals minus 2x plus 19. So to test the correctness, we can use uh, any other ordered pair. So in this case, I've, I've utilized uh, the ordered pair 313. So on the right hand side, if I replace x by 3, we get minus 2 times 3 plus 19. That's minus 6 plus 19. It's 13. And that is equal to the, to the left hand side. So therefore, the ordered pair 313 will also satisfy this generating rule. And therefore, there is a reasonable chance that it will be correct. Uh, at a later stage, uh, or maybe we should do it at this stage, I can show you that the calculator can be used to test the correctness of this. So if I can uh, get my calculator in again. So we've got the calculator here, and we already typed in the data. Uh, let's, let's, for instance, show that uh, if, if x is 5, uh, then y will be 9. So what I want to calculate here is, if I know what is x, what is the value of, of y? So I enter, enter the 5. And uh, that's the x value. And then I go to statistical variables, uh, option 5, the regression. I need to find the value for y if x is, is 5. That's actually y hat uh, of 5. So I select option 5. Can you see? What is the y value if the x value is that? And I expect to get an answer of, of 9 which is the case. Right, so we will talk a little bit more about this function of the calculator at a later stage. In lesson two, we focus on descriptions of best number patterns. Outcomes for this lesson. In this lesson, we will focus on how to construct an input-output table for a given number pattern. We will also focus on the extension of number patterns, what it means to find the best number pattern. We will also focus on the generalization of number patterns, as well as the usefulness of generalized uh, number patterns. 
Let us consider an example of extending a number pattern. In this particular number pattern, we use match sticks to make squares as shown here. So the first number uh, in, in this particular sequence or number pattern consists out of one square and it is clear that we will need four matches to make such a square. The second uh, number in this pattern is where we have used matchsticks to build uh, two squares. In the third one, three squares. In the fourth one, four squares. So we can construct an input-output table in which we record observations from these particular sketches. I think one obvious thing is uh, the number of squares. If you have one square, then we have the first term, two squares, second term, and so on. So we can focus on the number of terms. It's like we had the x before. You can see there's an increase of 1 in the value of s. So delta s is 1. And then at the same time, we record the number of matches needed uh, or required to construct such a particular shape. Now, it is pretty clear that the number of matches m depends on the number of squares. So to construct the first one, we need four matches. To construct the second one, we need an additional three matches, so seven. And the same to construct out of the second one, the third uh, number in this sequence, we again need an additional three. So it's pretty clear we constantly add uh, three. So therefore, if delta S is one, we find that delta M is equal to three. So this is clearly a particular sequence where we have a constant uh, first difference. We can easily extend this particular number pattern, as I've mentioned before, to, to find the, the next number in this sequence, term number five, we simply need to add three more matches to the 13 matches when we looked at term four. So every time if you add an extra or take an extra three matches, we can construct uh, the next term. So it is therefore quite uh, easy to extend this particular uh, number pattern. Let us discuss what it, did me what it means to find the best number pattern. I think to find the best number pattern implies the following. It is more than just predicting the next term. Like we've seen, we can predict the next term by constantly adding three more matches. It actually means, in general, prediction of the output from the input. So if we change the, the input, say, to 10 squares, question is, can you immediately tell me how many matches will be required? The input, of course, is the number of squares. The output, the number of corresponding matches. Now, remember, the input is the independent variable, while the output is the dependent variable. The number of matches depends on the number of squares. What is important in identifying uh, the best pattern is to identify what is constant and what is changing. So if we want to, to find the best pattern, it's important that we take note of the problem conditions. We, we have made the observation that if we look at the sketches, we can write down different inputs. And note each of these numbers must make sense. Like here, it means we look at a term in which there is six squares. The, the predicting the number of matches needed 
also seem to be quite easy if we can use the strategy where we constantly add at 3. But this is not a best number pattern. Because if I should ask you how many matches will be needed to build a hundred squares, then you'll have to continue with this uh, pattern until you you come to to a, a term where there is a hundred squares, and that's very time consuming. So we we try and find the best pattern. Now the first pattern that we've observed is that we we construct a square, and to build the next one we add three more add three more and so on. So here already we can see there's certain things that is uh, a constant and certain things uh, that is changing. So we constantly add three. While if we look at the next row, the second last row, we try and relate um, uh, these or change these the particular pattern so that uh, it is more clear uh, what is constant and what is changing. You see, I could say, uh, instead of saying uh, adding 3 every time, we can say in the first uh, square we, we use 4 matches, and then we add 3 matches 0 times. In the next one we have the first square and we add 3 matches once, then 3 matches twice, and so on until we get to the seventh one and there we add uh, six uh, times three matches. So if I at this stage would ask you how many matches will be needed to build uh, a figure in which there is a hundred squares, you most probably can answer that question by saying it will be four plus, well one less than the input, in other words 99 times, times three. So, so here we get a pattern that we can utilize. I, I tried to show you clearly what is changing. What I've indicated in blue. The 0, the 1, the 2, the 3, the 4, the 5 and the 6. That is what is changing. The rest are all constant. But unfortunately this particular changing numbers is not directly related to the to the input. So the best pattern we find in the last row, because what we did with the first one, instead of saying we have four matches, we can say we have one match to which we add three matches, and then change the rest accordingly. So in other words, I take three matches away from the four, so we have an additional group of three matches. Now why is this now considered to be the best pattern? Well, simply because what is changing here, namely the 1, the 2, the 3, the 4, the 5, 6, the 7, in other words the number that I multiplied by 3 is identical to the inputs. So what is changing is directly related to the, uh, to the input. So therefore asking that question again, how many matches will be needed to, to build a figure consisting out of a hundred squares? We can easily answer that and we can say that is 1 plus a hundred times times 3. And therefore the last row is therefore considered to be the, the best pattern. We are now in a position to generalize this specific number pattern. Now, to generalize a number pattern implies firstly finding the best output pattern in terms of the input pattern. So identifying what is constant and what is changing is still important and what is really changing is the input. And then we can formulate a general rule or make a conjecture what we consider to be the general rule or the generating rule. We, we discussed in the previous slide how to find the best output pattern in terms of the input pattern and we, and we came up with this particular result because what is uh, changing here uh, in the output is simply the input uh, as I've pointed out. So 
We then come with a general output framework in terms of input changes. So in this framework, we, we get a general framework of 1 plus a number multiplied by 3. And, and that number with which you multiply the 3 is the input. So if this input is 7, then it's 1 plus 7 times 3, as you can see in this last one. We are now in a position uh, to, to formulate a general rule. Note what is constant is the 1, the plus, multiplied by 3, a number multiplied by 3. It's only this number, which is the input, which is changing. So now we can generalize the output in terms of the input. So we can say the output, the number, of matches depends on the number of squares and it's equal to 1 plus the input multiplied by 3 or more specifically we can write it as 1 plus 3s and this is then the generalization of this particular number pattern. Next we focus on how to utilize uh, the generalization of a number pattern. So the generalization can be utilized in the following three ways. We can predict the output for any input, or we can predict the input for any suitable output. Right, suitable means you must have in this particular problem conditions uh, just enough matches. There cannot be a surplus number of matches. And the correctness of the prediction can always be checked against the problem conditions. In other words, we can make a sketch and check the correctness. So let's uh, utilize this generating rule. And look at the first question. How many matches are needed to construct a term in a sequence consisting of nine square cells? Now, here we want to predict the output if the input is 9. So we want to work out m of 9 and that clearly is 1 plus 3 times 9 which is 27 plus 1 or 28 matches. So here we've predicted the output. Now we can test the correctness by actually constructing this particular term. And then if you want to, you can count the number of, of matches. Right? And, and you should find it's 28 matches. The second type of problem, if we are given, say, uh, 37 matches, the question is how many square cells will there be in a sequence if 37 matches are used in the construction thereof? So now we know that the output ms is 37. Of course, that is 1 plus 3s. So here you can see you have a very uh, simple equation, simple linear equation, and we can solve it, uh, keeping the 3s on one side, subtracting 1 from both sides, give me that 3s is 36, therefore s is 12, and this implies in a sequence where you will uh, need 37 matches to build square cells, there will be 7 squares in, in this term in the sequence. And now again we can check it against uh, uh, the problem conditions. So what I've done here is I build a, a term in which there is 12 squares and I leave it for you. You can count the number of matches and you'll find that there will be 37 matches. You see what I mean by a suitable output? 38 is not a suitable output. The next suitable output will be 40. Remember the whole idea of adding, adding three uh, more matches to build the next one. We look at the role of the calculator and in finding the general writing rule and also how we can use the calculator in making uh, input predictions from output values or output predictions from given input uh, values. 
Now, in, in this particular problem, we ended up with this table, and it was pretty clear uh, that the first difference is, was constantly and equal to 3. So therefore, because the first differences are constant and equal to 3, uh, the relationship between uh, the output and the input must be uh, linear of, of nature. In, in general, if we uh, if the first differences in a relationship uh, are constant, if there is a constant uh, first difference uh, in in output values, like in this case, then the 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 finding equation must be linear of nature. So if your input is x and your output is y then in general the relationship will be y equals mx plus c. So if x is 1, you get m times 1 plus c or m plus c. If it's 2, it's 2m plus c. If it's 3, it's 3m plus c. And if it's 4, it's 4m plus c. And if I find the first differences between these output values, so 2m plus c minus m plus c, that's clearly m and uh, 3m plus c minus 2m plus c as indicated here is also m and finally 4m plus c minus 3m plus c also turns out to be, be m. So the first differences are constant and always equal to, to 1. Remember that was the way that we could find uh, this particular one going back to our previous methods in this particular example m is therefore therefore 3. Now, I can now use my calculator in this example. Firstly, I can use my calculator in stats mode to determine the, the general rule. Now remember, the calculator formula uh, is given by y equals bx uh, plus a, while the problem formula, uh, the output is not y, but, but ms and the input is not x but s so we should find that uh, for this particular uh, problem b will be equal to, to 3 and a will be equal to 1 so we can then get the rule and, and then we can once we've input these values into, into the calculator we can predict outputs for given inputs like for instance if the input is 9 I can calculate the output. Now, in terms of calculator terminology, it will be y hat of 9. Right? If x is 9, what is the y value? So that's predicting an uh, output. And the calculator will show us it's 21. But of course, in terms of the problem conditions, it will mean m of 9 is 28. So in other words, to build 9 squares, you'll need 28 matches. The opposite is also true. You can predict inputs from given outputs. Like, for instance, if we have 37 matches, as we've seen before. In other words, your output is 37 matches. How many squares can we make? In other words, what is x, the value of x for that? And that we've seen is 12. So, therefore, if s is 12, if you have 12 squares, then you will need 37 matches. Okay, so let's see how we could utilize the calculator. So, the first thing I want to do is to, to show that we get exactly uh, the same formula. Now, remember I said before, uh, because we only have two unknowns, uh, b and a, we only need to enter two sets of ordered pairs. Uh, so I change to statistical mode, right, stats mode, and we know from the fact that first difference are constant that it will be linear of, of nature, so we select option 2, and then I'm just going to input the two order pairs where, uh, where x, but in this case in the problem s is really uh, 2, and where x or s in the problem is 3 and then just get to the outputs if the input is 2 the output 
is 7 and if the input is 3, the output is 10. Right, so that will be sufficient. And now we can use this stat uh, key, which is a second function of, of the one key. And going to regression, I can recall the values of A and, and B. Now I should find that A is 1. So if you recall that, clearly you see A is 1. Remember I said you need to clear this. And in the same way, I can uh, recall B. And, and that should turn out as expected to be 3. How can we predict outputs for certain uh, inputs? So here we have the input 9. Just note that in the calculator you don't type it like that. You write 9 or y hat. So in other words, I first input the 9. Then I go to the regression box and I find y hat of 9. So in other words, what is the value of y, which in this case is m, uh, what is m of 9? And this should give us uh, 28. Right. So to, to build 9 squares, you need 28 matches. And in the last one, given an, an output of 37, in other words, a y value or an m value of 37, we now want to know what is the corresponding x value or s value. In other words, how many squares will there be in. So I need now to find the x value. So I select what is x or what is s if y is 37 or m 37. And calculator tells me it is 12. So there will be 12 squares in the cell if we have 37 uh, matches. We are now ready to tackle tutorial 2 which deals with the description of best number patterns and the utilization of that. So here we use toothpicks to construct sequences of hexagon cells. Now hexa means six as shown in the cell, in, in the sketch here. So to construct uh, H1, the first uh, term, you need clearly six toothpicks. To construct the next one in the sequence, you need that 6 plus an extra 5. And the third one, you need H2 and then add an extra 5. So here is uh, a table that we can complete. So your task will be, uh, although I only got three sketches here, I want you to extend it to six cells, number of cells and then write down the output, number of toothpicks required, and then find the best pattern. Secondly, you need to use your calculator to generalize the relationship between uh, the number of toothpicks and the number of hexagon cells. You need to use your calculator to determine how many toothpicks are needed to construct a term in a sequence consisting out of 120 hexagon cells. Fourthly, you need to utilize your general rule obtained in, in number two to check the correctness of your calculator answer in number three. And then number five, use the calculator to determine how many hexagon cells will there be in a sequence if 2,316 toothpicks are used in the construction thereof. And then again, uh, utilize your general formula, which you obtained in, in 2, to check the correct, correctness of your calculator answer in number 5. I suggest that you, you pause the video, do tutorial 2, and then come back and view possible solutions. Let us look at a suggested solution to problem 1 for tutorial uh, 2. So, here 
are again the three uh, terms in the sequence and you need to extend and complete this table. So we only have the information for the first three. In other words, if you have one cell you require uh, six toothpicks. If you have two cells you, e you require an extra five, so eleven. And if it's three you need an extra five, so it's eleven plus five. 16. So if we extend it to 6 to get the number of toothpicks here, we simply add uh, 5 to 16, it's 21. To get the number of toothpicks for 5 hexagon cells, you add an extra 5 to 21, it's 26. And then finally, if you have uh, 6 hexagon uh, cells in a term in the sequence, the number of toothpicks will be 26 plus 5. So this is just a way of finding the next. Remember, this is not the, the best uh, pattern. The best pattern, as we can have seen before, can be written in this form, where what is changing must be directly related to, to the input. So what I do here, I say to construct the first one, I take one toothpick and I add to that five toothpicks once. To construct the second term, we have the one toothpick and we can add to that five to toothpicks twice. So now you can clearly see what is changing, namely there's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the numbers that's changing in the output and they are directly linked to the, to the input. So actually at this stage you can say that uh, the general term I haven't indicated it here, but uh, you can clearly see that will be h of n is uh, 1 plus 5 times n. But we will investigate that uh, by means of, of the calculator. Let us look at a suggested solution to problem 2. It's expected of you to use your calculator to generalize the relationship between uh, the number of toothpicks and the number of hexagon cells. Now, from uh, a previous observation, we had this particular uh, table. So, firstly, we note that the first differences are constant namely equal to 5, because we add 5 ma match, uh, toothpicks every time we want to create the next term. So when you therefore select stats mode, you will, you will select the linear option. And we are informed by the fact that the first differences are constant, that we must select the linear option. So you then enter some input and output uh, values. Again, it will be sufficient just to enter uh, two sets. And then you recall simply the values for, for A and B. And you should find that in this case that A is 1 and B is 5. So that B is the 5 that you add every time. And we should find that A is so 1. Remember from the base pattern we have predicted this. So this will be the general rule. And then, in addition, I want to show how we can use the table mode to extend this. Let's say we want to extend it up to uh, uh, term number 10. Okay, so as before, we select statistical mode and go for the linear option. And, and just enter two values. Let's enter the last two values. In other words, if x, but of course in this problem n uh, is 5 and, and 6. You could enter all of them, but 2 is sufficient. And then enter the corresponding outputs. If it's 5, it's 26. And if it's 6, it's 31. And then simply uh, recall the values. 
in the regression box, namely we will see that that A is 1 and again going to the regression box note that B will be 5. So this is then the general rule and then uh, now that we know the general rule I can uh, use my my table mode and then just input the equation. Now in this case the equation is uh, is 5x plus 1. Right? Remember the n must be uh, replaced by x and this is 5x. Remember the x as mentioned before is that particular one plus uh, 1. Now it's going to ask me where to start. So I'm still going to start at 1. So I will just confirm these results. But I'm going to go a bit further up to values of 10. And we're still going to take steps of 1. So my delta n or my delta x is 1. Once you've got that, you can simply check. You see the first one, the output is 6. Second one, 11. 16, 21, 26, and 31. So that confirms it. The next one will be, of course, 5 more. 36, 5 more, 41, 5 more, 46, and finally up to 51. So once you have the defining or the general rule, you can easily uh, extend this. Let us look to a suggested or suggested solutions to problems 3 and 4 of tutorial 2. You need to use your calculator to determine how many toothpicks are needed to construct a term in a sequence consisting out of 120 T cells. So you, you use your calculator to show that uh, y hat of 120 is 601. So in other words, h of 120 is, is 601. So if you want to make a cell consisting out of 120 hexagon, you will need 601 uh, toothpicks to construct this particular term. So let's get the calculator in. To, to do this. I think I'll do it at a later stage. Let's just see that once you have done this, you can utilize your general formula that you obtained in number 2 to check the correctness of this particular answer. Remember the general formula was that h of n is 5n plus 1 and we use the general formula to calculate h of 120. So h of 120 is then 5 times 120 plus 1 and that's clearly 601 which then confirmed this. So let's now get the calculator uh, to, to show how you can do it by means of your calculator. Remember earlier I had the calculator in table mode. You'll have to, to cancel that and the way you do that is simply to, to switch to stats mode and then unfortunately you need to retype in uh, two values again or two sets of ordered pairs. Now I've already done that. All I really want to do here is to show that if x is 120 or in a problem if n is 100 and 20 that uh, that y hat or h of 120 is both 601. So as I've mentioned before, I simply input the x value and then uh, go to the regression box and, and we select option 5. So I calculate or ask what is the value of y if x is 100 and and 20 and that's clearly uh, 601. Let us look at suggested solutions to the last two problems in tutorial uh, 2. You need to use your calculator to determine how many hexagon cells will there be in a sequence term if 2316 toothpicks are used in the construction thereof. 
So what we really need to do is is to find uh, or, or predict the the x value if we know the y value to be 2,316. So you will you will determine uh, x hat of 2,316, and you should get uh, 463, which really means that h of 463. So in other words, if you construct a, 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 a cell in this sequence or a term in this sequence consisting out of 463 uh, hexagons, you will need 2,316 toothpicks. So therefore, to answer the uh, question, there will be 463 hexagon cells in this term. Of course, I'll come back to this calculator uh, calculation, but you can utilize your general formula, which we know by now is h of n is 5n plus 1 to calculate n if we know that h of n is 2316 so h of n which is 5n plus 1 is 2316 so we have a simple linear equation by subtracting one from both sides we get that 5n is 2315 and then divide throughout by 5 we get that n is 400 and and 63, which of course will then uh, confirm the calculator calculation. So let me just get the calculator to repeat this calculation. Okay, so I need uh, to find out what is the x value if the y value is 2316. So I op uh, input 2316 uh, and, 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 and then go to my regression box and just cal calculate x hat of that particular value. Note that as mentioned before uh, what you see on the calculator screen is slightly different to this mathematical notation and confirming this then gives us an answer of, of 463. In lesson 3 we focus on more advanced number patterns. Outcomes for this lesson. In this lesson we focus on number patterns in recurring letter sequences and some more advanced number patterns. Let us look at some number patterns in recurring letter sequences. Consider the following let letter sequence where we repeat the word T. The question is, comment on which letter will appear in positions 510 and 673. Now, to be able to answer this particular question, we need to analyze this recurring letter sequence. If you look at the letter T, then the T appears in positions 1, 4, 7 and so on. And you should be able to generalize this as position 3n minus 2. Can you see? We add 3 every time. And uh, if n is 1, you get 3, but you want 1, so therefore minus 2. Where, of course, n is a natural number. In the same way, the letter E appears in positions 2, uh, 5, 8, etc. And this again can be generalized as 3n minus 1, where n is a natural number. While the letter A appears in positions 3, 6, 9, 12, or in general, in position 3n, where n is a natural number. So coming back to the question, if we look at 510, and because 510 is 3 times 170, you can use your calculator to check this, the letter A will therefore appear in position 510. Can you see why the letter A? Because A is linked to multiples of 3. 
and it will appear in position 510 for the 170th time in the sequence. Well, if we look at 673, this we can write as 3 times 225 minus 2. Uh, so, so therefore, it fits in with the pattern of appearance for the letter T. So, therefore, the letter T will appear in position 673 mm -hmm. and in this particular case, it will appear there for the 225th time in this particular sequence. Let us look at a more advanced number pattern where we want to find the remainder. Suppose the question is, what is the remainder if 3 to the power 8972 is divided by 13? Maybe you'll say, but we could simply use our calculator. Let me show you why this is not possible. Let's take the number uh, 3 uh, to the power 8972. It's quite a big number, but let's divide it by 13 because if you can do this, you, you can see or identify what is the quotient and the fractional part will be linked to the remainder. If I do this, then of course the calculator cannot handle this. So that simply means that unfortunately you will not be able to use your calculator here. So what then can we do? Well, you can use powerful problem solving strategies like solve simpler problems first, construct a table and look for a pattern. So I'm going to solve very simple problems first. In other words, I'm starting off with 3 to the power 1. Of course, if you divide that by 13, it goes in 0 times and the remainder is 3. Then we take 3 to the power 2. So in other words, I focus on very simple index numbers, not such big ones. 3 to the power 2, of course, is 9. If you divide it by 13, again it goes 0 times and a remainder of 9. 3 to the power 3, which is 27. If you divide it by 13, it goes in twice, which is 26. And the remainder is therefore 1. Going to the next one, 3 to the uh, power uh, 4, right, which will be 81. And here you can use your calculator and you'll find that the remainder is 3 and so on. If I solve a couple of simpler, similar problems and put this in a table, then clearly we start uh, visualizing a pattern. Ca can you see the remainders 3, 9, 1 repeats itself. So we look for the pattern. We see that the remainder is 1. Now there is two cases where the remainder is 1. And I hope you can see that that is when the index numbers are actually 3 and 6, which is multiples of 3, where n is a natural number. While the remainder is 9 in the cases when the index number is 2 and 5, which of course is 1 less than a multiple of, of 3. And furthermore, the, the remainder is equal to equal to 3 when the index numbers are actually 1 and 4 which is 2 less than a multiple of, of 3. So coming back to the problem we just need to look at the index and the index being 8972 if you divide that uh, by 3 right, because I'm, I want to see in which pattern it will fit you will see that the quotient is 2,991 and then the remainder uh, or, or you need to subtract 1 to get that. So in other words, this particular index can be written as uh, a multiple of 3 minus 1 and this fits into this pattern. So therefore the remainder is 3 to the power 
8,972 is divided by 13 uh, will, will be 9. So the, the powerful strategy is here to solve simpler problems first and record these results in a table and then look for a, a pattern. We're now ready to tackle tutorial 3 where the focus is on more advanced number patterns. Consider the following letter sequence where we continuously repeat the word soup and I want you to comment on which letter will appear in positions 749 and 847. And the second problem you need to find out what is the units digit in 7 to the power 399. I suggest that you pause the video, do tutorial 3 and then come back and view possible solutions. Let us consider a suggested solution to problem 1 of tutorial 3. You were given the repeating letter sequence and you need to comment on which letters will appear in the two positions as indicated here. So if we analyze this, we see that the number S appears in positions 1, 5, 9, etc. So you get this particular uh, number sequence where there is a constant difference of 4 and the generalization of that is, is 4N uh, minus, uh, minus 3 where n is a natural number. In the same way the letter O appears in positions 2, 6, 10 etc. and this can be generalized as 4n minus 2 where n is a natural number. While the letter U uh, appears in position 3, 7, 11 etc or in general in position 4n minus 1 where n is a natural number and finally the letter P appears in multiples of 4 positions 4, 8, 12 which can be generalized as 4n. So going back to the problem because 749 can be written you see you need to write it in terms of a multiple of 4 it can be written in the form of 4 times 188 minus 3 and that fits in with this first pattern. The letter S will appear in position 749 for the 188th time in this particular sequence. And because, right, this symbol means because, 847 can be written as 4 times 212 minus 1. It fits in with the positions in which the, the letter U appears. So the letter U will appear in this position and for the 212th time in this particular sequence. Let us look at the suggested solution to problem 2 from tutorial 3 which is the last problem in this video. The question is very simple. What is the units digit in 7 to the power 399? You cannot use your calculator in such a problem. So one suggested way of doing it is to use the problem solving strategies of solving simpler problems first, record your findings in a table and here the calculator can be useful in uh, constructing this table and then look for a pattern. So you could use your, your calculator to uh, complete this table or some of these cases are very simple like 7 to the power 0 is 1 so the units digit is 1 7 to the power 1 is 7 so the units digit is 7 7 to the power 2 is 49 so the units digit is 9 I think most of us can go up to there quite easily but let me show you how the calculator can assist you in completing this table so we uh, construct a table for y equals 7 to the power x. So we go to uh, table mode and the defining equation is 7 to the power uh, x 
where x we would like to start at 0 and we would like to end at 8 right, and take steps over 1. So now it's just a case of copying it. If the index is 0, the unit digit is clearly 1. If it's 1, it's 7. If it's 2, it is 9. If it's 3, it is equal to 3. If it's 7 to the power of 4, the unit digit is 1. 7 to the power of 5, the unit digit is 7. 7 to the power of 6, the unit digit is 9. 7 to the power of 7, the unit digit is 3. And finally, 7 to the power 8, the unit digit is 1 again. So now we can look for a pattern. The pattern should be obvious. That namely, if the unit digit is 1, that is when the indexes are 0, 4 and 8. And that's multiples of 4. Where in this case, we can write that of course as 4n where n must be a counting number, so we need to cater for, for the zero. And it is seven, when it's one more than a multiple of four, you see, when it's one more than zero, one more than four, and obviously it will also happen when it's one more than eight. So that's when the index is four n plus one. In the same way, uh, the, the unit's digit will be equal to 9 if the index number is 2 more than a multiple of 4. And it will turn out to be 3 if the index is 3 more than a multiple of 4. So going back to the problem, because 399 can be written as 4 times 99 plus 3, therefore it fits in with the last pattern and therefore the units digit in 7 to the power 399 will be equal to, to 3. We have come to the end of the video on number patterns. Remember, you need to consult textbooks for additional examples. You need to attempt as many possible other similar examples on your own. You need to compare your methods with those that were discussed in this video. You need to repeat this procedure until you are confident. And please do not forget, practice makes perfect. Good luck and goodbye.